with Jalen Hurts, we get one version of him when we talk to him, and he's very stoic and laid back. Just kind of wondering what he's like with his teammates. Do you guys see a different side of him at times? Uh, no, he, he's the same way. Um, that's just how he is. He's, he's pretty much like me, kind of. Uh, Can you guys hear? Uh, no, we can't hear you, Miles. Can't, can't hear me? Oh. Miles, I think you're good now. Can y'all hear me? Okay, well, uh, yeah, uh, I, I, like you said, it, it, he's he's very uh, laid back. Uh, I think we're, me and him are similar, just real laid back. Can be goofy at times, you know, but when it's time to lock in, he he's he's pretty locked in and, and, and solid with it. So even even after the game, before the game, he he's just he's focused and locked in. You could try and joke with him before the game, you ain't gonna get nothing, you know. He he's locked in, focused, and I like that, but. That's that's how he, that's just how he is, you know. Um, just real competitive and, and locked in, but he he is goofy though. Have you ever tried to joke with him before a game? Uh, a little bit, a little bit. He'll try to, you know, not really get that serious face, but he'll he'll just I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. But he's he's very very locked in before and after the game, win or lose. You know, he's just that type of player. And during practice, you know, he's. All, constantly trying to figure out stuff, uh, figure out stuff he could have done better, you know, talking to himself. I'll walk past him, and he'll just randomly ask me something, you know, just always locked in. Go ahead, Robin and Martin. Hey, Miles. Um, just want to ask you about the situation of the game on Sunday. So when you guys play, uh, Washington will be playing at the same time. Will you be cognizant of that and paying attention to the scoreboard, or how do you approach it? Uh, knowing that you need them to lose, and obviously you guys need to win. Uh, honestly, um, I don't think my job is to watch the scoreboard. <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I, uh, we know what what could happen and what possible can happen. But all, all I know is the only thing that we can control is winning that game. So uh, that's all I'm gonna be focused on. Um, not gonna really worry about be worried about the scoreboard if if. We take care of business. Uh, we just got to hope and pray that, um, you know, on the other side, everything's taken care of, too. Go ahead, Martin, and then Jamie. Hey, Miles. Um, both uh, you didn't play in the first game against Dallas, and, and Jalen obviously wasn't the quarterback back then. And the Cowboys have, like, the worst rushing defense in the NFL. I mean, is that, A, how important is, is the running game to you guys, and do you feel that's something you guys can exploit? Thanks. Yeah, uh, uh, the running game is very important. Um, uh, just getting it, getting it started, and getting it rolling. This is gonna open up a lot of stuff for for us as a team. And um, you know, having a quarterback like Jalen, where he can use his feet and uh, you know, pull it when he needs to pull it. Uh, just attacking the defense, staying staying on him, being aggressive in the run game. I think it's gonna help us regardless, uh, whatever we want to do. And uh, you know, but. They're still, still a great team over there. Still a good f football team. Still got NFL players on the team, so nothing's going to be easy, despite of the the stats and whatever it is. But we just got to control. What we control and go out there and dominate, play after play. Go ahead, Jamie, and then Les. Miles, have you had a talk with Jalen about Cowboys Week? I mean, he he didn't play in the the first time. You know, he wasn't the starter when you guys played him the first time. But, but is it different this year anyway because, you know, there's no fans. It's, it's bizarre, right? I mean, have you had to talk to him about the rivalry and what it means? Uh, not, not me and him personally, no. But as a team, uh, Doug's, you know, Doug's been, been, you know, harping on it's Dallas week. There ain't really much else to really say. It's just Dallas week. It's one of them weeks, you know. We don't like them. They don't like us. That's just how it is. And No, nah, but personally, I haven't talked to him about it, but he'll, he'll, he'll figure it out. <laughs> fans or no fans, he'll figure it out. <laughs> hey, can I follow up real quick? What was the best Christmas gift you ever got? Oh, I got this question before. Um, I say when the first Xbox came out, I don't know when that was. And before that, when I was younger, I was I used to love WWE. So... My mom, one day, she one Christmas, she bought all the characters, Undertaker, Stone Cold, Steve Austin, The Rock, Autumn, and she also bought the, the wrestling actual ring with the entrance, <coughs> too. 
So, like, I, I had a whole ball with that. And, you know, I got my characters doing the entrances. I did the whole That's thing. I was excited. Thing. All right, we'll take two more here with Les and then Zach. Hey, Miles. I wanted to ask you about your offensive line. It'll be the same one, apparently, this week that you had last week, uh, unless something catastrophic happens here in, like, next few days. That's a new experience. What will that be like? How much does that help? And this is such a different line than the one that you started the season with. How is this line in terms of run blocking in terms of what you needed to do? Um, I don't honestly I I don't see any difference. I think I answered this question last week. Um Yeah, the line's been changing every week, but uh when you got a coach like Stout and you got a center like Jason Kelsey, um, don't really matter who else is on the line. Not, not to, you know, discredit the rest of the offensive linemen, but, you know, those two are key parts of our offensive line. And f to be honest, our offense, they, they, them two, they handle a lot of stuff with the calls and getting us in the right place. But honestly, the whole year, despite of all the different substitutions and lineups, I honestly think that the line's been doing a heck of a job with it, you know. And that's all I could really say. Take one more here with Zach. Hey, Miles, you've uh, told us in the past that you don't pay attention to your stats, but 1,000 yards is a significant benchmark for uh, running backs, and you're 190 yards away with two games to go. Is that something that you're aware of, and is that something that would be important for you to reach in these next two games? I'm aware that we got to win this week. Uh, I'm aware if we win this week and everything uh, handles itself, we got a chance to win the uh, the NFC East next game, so that's that's what I'm aware of. What does Cowboys Week, week mean this year, as far as the rivalry and, and the fact that everything's different without the crowds and with a rookie quarterback that's never even played in this rivalry before? Yeah, um, when you're talking about Cowboys Week, I think you know, regardless of you know crowd noise or not, rookie quarterback or not. Um, when you get dropped to the the Philadelphia Eagles, um, this rivalry you've 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 accepted, you know this rivalry, um, regardless of the record, regardless of anything, um, it's always a must win for this city and for this team. Go ahead, Ed, and then Les. Hey, Jalen, Merry Christmas to you and your family. Um, thank you. Just. Um, we talked to Marcus Epps this past week about, you know, how you were able to keep guys calm on the sidelines when things were kind of spiraling out of control in the first quarter. And we've talked about your leadership in the past, but do you feel like, you know, stepping up as a leader was even more important this past week, given the nature of the, you know, how undermanned you were in the secondary? Yeah. Um, actually, no, I don't. Um, I think the biggest thing that, that I've always learned, especially from veteran guys from, um, my rookie year to now is uh, just got to go out there and play. Um, if something does, you know, happen during the game, during the play, uh, good or bad, once you go to the sideline, you sit down, you talk about it. You communicate, um, listen to coach as far as the correction goes, and you fix them. Then once you go back on the field, now everybody has a clear mind on how either the offense is attacking us and how we can fix it or individually a mistake or something that you may have made for you to make that correction on the run. Go ahead, Les, and then Rob Kessner. Hey, Jalen. So looking at the tackle stats for the team, you're number two. Alex Singleton is number one, and he didn't hardly play any defensive snaps like the first four or five games. What is with that guy? Um, Alex is a dog, you know. Um, from the day one, you know, their coach, you know, promoted him to be starting. You know, he just flies around and he makes plays, you know, and, and that's one thing that I love about him. He's confident. Um, he knows his stuff, you know, for one. Two, he's confident. And, and three, he's just going to fly around and knock guys out, and that's what you want out of, out of your linebacker. Thank you, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We'll take two more here with Rob and then John. Jalen, what's up, man? Merry Christmas. Uh, Merry and I want to ask about Christmas. Um, you know, for the young guys this year in particular, do you have to, like, talk to them about how they're going to literally, like, where they're going to eat and where they're going to be? Because, like, under normal circumstances, you'd probably be able to hook up with family or that kind of stuff. This year, you can't. So, 
Do you have to do that with uh, some of the younger guys and take them in? Yeah, uh, for sure. It's it's one of those things to where you you're, you're telling guys, you know, um, I might not have I'm not gonna have a lot of family, you know, in, in my house just because of COVID and protocols. Um, you know, you come over and get a plate if you know you don't you don't have anybody there, a girlfriend or a mom or or somebody or another one of the teammates. Um, so it's definitely something that you you gotta look out for these rookies. You know, I, I've been there before. Um, being from the South and, you know, uh, my family didn't fly for my first Christmas, so I, I remember going to Malcolm's house. Um, so it's definitely one of the things that you, you got to look out for the young guys, you know, because you want them to do the same thing when they're veterans and they got rookies coming in. Go ahead, John. Hey, Jalen, Merry Christmas. Um, um, just wanted to talk to you now that we're so late in the season and you've had an interesting season with the transition. Uh, how Marquand has helped you uh, coming in as a new coach, and also Tim, because he's been there for a while uh, as the safeties coach. Yeah, um, I, I can say one thing, especially I can start with Coach Tim. Him uh, being, you know, the, the safeties coach as far as, you know, um, helping me um, in the book, in the playbook. You know, of course, I knew the defense, but I knew it from the outside, outside in, not the inside out. Um, so now it's safety, you know. Help me as far as my alignment, you know, what to look at with my eyes, um, my body position, and, and different things like that as far as in this communication as well. And then you go to Coach M, a guy who played in the secondary, um, all positions, you know, corner, nickel, safety, dime, all those things. He's more of helped me out as far as technique, you know, whether I'm in press, whether I'm in off, you know, uh, what foot to have up, what foot to have back, you know, where my eyes should be, where my hands should be. Um, and with covers down the field and things like that. So I think with those two guys, um, that one-two combo for me has definitely uh, helped me excel definitely on this back end of the season. Going back to Texas, your uh, home state there. Um, I know you played the Cowboys earlier this year, although I don't think you were in the lineup. But, you know, what, what, are, you, what are your emotions going back to, uh, to Texas to play this game against Dallas? Um, the same as every game. Uh, I mean, I'm just going to approach it just like I do every, every other week and uh, go out and try to have success. Go ahead, John, and then Jamie. <clears throat> Which John? You, John Clark. All right, sorry about that. Hey, Jalen, um, going back home to Texas, I, I think your dad is going to be able to maybe be there in person to see you play in the NFL for the first time. And the fact that he wore the Eagles green and played for them and you're following in his footsteps on the same team, what does that mean to you and going back home with him being there? Um. I mean, this is the only year that he's hasn't like he hasn't been able to come to any of my games. So it's pretty much, it'll pretty much be the same. Just you know what I'm used to having having him and my family, you know, they're watching me play. So it'll be it'll be pretty much the same. I'm sure it'll be ex it, it'll be exciting for them. Go ahead, Jamie, and then Les. Uh, Dylan, I'm gonna just ask an off the beaten path question, but uh, what was your favorite Christmas gift ever? Uh. I had got a rate like a little a mini razor motorcycle when I was like, I think I was six or seven, that I had begged my dad for and he got it for me. Go ahead, Les, and then Kristen. Hey Jalen. Trying to understand coaching points here. Everybody saw on the broadcast last week. Uh there was a ball down the sideline that was incomplete to you. And the TV showed Doug Peterson uh gesturing to you about his about eyes what was that all about he wasn't he, I don't I think y'all may have misunderstood he wasn't gesturing okay. to me because yeah right. he wasn't he didn't he didn't say anything to me or or any of that yeah he didn't say anything to me I don't even think he was talking to me maybe he was talking okay. to the ref or somebody huh all right were you <laughs> held on the play or anything mm, y'all seen it <laughs> yeah he held me okay. maybe that's what he was okay thank you yep yep Go ahead, Kristen. Hey, for the last few years, we've seen some of the young Eagles guys really step up late in the season, and we're seeing it again now with guys like you, Quez Watkins, Jalen Hurts. Now that you guys are on this stage in a essentially must-win game this Sunday against the Cowboys, how do you feel like you guys, the young guys, are, are stepping into this moment? Um, I feel like we're doing well. We're just trying to, you know, make sure we go in, prepare well, and, and uh, you know, enjoy and, and, and embrace the process. Because, uh, you know, this is where you, you can step up big time, you know, for the team. And like you said, for a must-win game, 
And then we just, you know, go in, respect our opponents and, you know, continue to work hard and do the things we can to be successful. If I can follow up, when you talk with Jalen Hurts, you would never know that he's a rookie because he is just so calm, cool, collected, level-headed, and he has so many kind of wise words of wisdom. Is there anything that he imparts to you guys that has really stuck with this Eagles offense? Um, pretty much just everything. You know, it's a, a lot of the rookies we have here are like that. Like, a lot of us are like that. Like, we, you know, have a lot of wisdom and, uh, you know, wise beyond our years. And he says a lot of things that you would expect from, like, a third year, fourth year, fifth year quarterback. But, I mean, like I said, that's, you know, that's built in him. And you that's something you can't teach. All right. I see one more hand raised. So, we'll end it here with John. Hey, Jalen, um, uh, just curious, uh, your father wasn't here a long time, but uh, I was wondering if he kind of clued you in to this rivalry uh, when the Eagles drafted you and what it meant to the fan base up here. Um, he did, but he also told me, you know, just go out and play. Like, you know, just go out and play football. And, uh, of course, you know, everybody has their rivalry. We're from high school to college to – the pros. So um, I know it's a big robbery. I've seen it around here. And, uh, you know, he, he he told me a few times about it. First, how are you feeling? And uh, uh, also, when you look at last week and, and you saw Michael and, and Kayvon, what did you see from those young guys in, in your absence? Uh, they was competing, man, on every level. Um, you know, um, I was proud of them, you know, you know, just been going out there. Uh, create turnovers, uh, making like play routine plays they were doing. You know, uh, some was a uh, loss, but uh, you know they fought through everything. And how are you feeling? Huh? How are you feeling? I'm good. How are you yeah. feeling? I I'm doing well. I'm, I'm worried about you. It has to be. It's Christmas Eve. What gifts you got under that tree? And happy holidays too. Yeah, we lit. <laughs> Go ahead, Ed, and then Martin. Hey, Slay. Merry Christmas, man. To you and your family there. Um, thank you, thank you. Same to you. Yeah, thank you. Well, welcome back. Um, just the challenge of sitting out last week. How how frustrating was it to kind of have to watch that one from the sidelines? It was rough, you know. What I'm saying uh, I was trying my best, you know, to uh, to be there, but uh, you know, uh, of course, it didn't pan out right. But uh, man, I uh, I knew that game that could have made a big difference in that, and um, you know, because only one or two plays that uh, could have been a game changer, and I, and I knew me being the the guy I am. Or the made them type of plays. So, but uh, the guys did good though. At the end of the day, they competed, got turnovers. Uh, they did. They did a pretty good job, man. You know, uh, just a little play there, play and then play here. Thanks, man. And Martin and then Les. Hey, Slay. Merry Christmas. Um, thank you. Thank you. Merry Christmas, Leo too. Well, thanks. Hey, you've had uh, quite a run against uh, top wide receivers lately, and and you got another one coming up in in Amari Cooper. Um, what were you able to do, like, the first game against him to kind of keep him in, in under control somewhat? I mean, um, we just did what we had to do, just play ball, compete. You know, um, obviously I would never um, – he didn't have uh, his his guy, uh, you know, Dak, you know, so I would never credit myself as winning because I, I want to go against the best, and he didn't have his best. But uh, but he's a talented guy, man. Uh, I look forward to always battling and uh, – he, he gets me better every day. I know my goal to get him better, and I'm um, continuing to keep competing. So, but, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to the matchups. Go ahead, Les, and then Bo. Ho, 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 Slay. How are you? Ho, um, ho, ho. Indeed. Uh, so, this concussion, that was your second of the season. Uh, right. You, you know the, 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 the conversation around that subject. Uh, how much does it bother you? How much do you worry about it? Uh, you know, what things are going to be like in 20 or 30 years? Uh, you know, how, how, what's your approach, I guess, on this? Uh, that what that what made the decision for uh, that was best for me not to play last week, just because of the fact that that was my second one. And I felt like, uh, honestly, man, I didn't let my brain heal. You know, like I got kids and uh, my kids are funny. So uh, if my kids see me uh, at age 40, 50, sucking out a straw, they're not going to be pretty much sad. They might crack a lot of jokes, so I cannot let them get the jokes up on me. So, uh, I, you know, I want my son to be looking at me laughing. Dad, you sucking out a straw, goo -goo 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 -goo. giggling, goggling. I'm, I can't, uh-uh, uh-uh. So uh, uh, I thought about that, and I just thought about my mental health, man. You know, uh, you know, my health do come first, uh, my family do, and I, I want to be there for my kids at the end of the day. You know, I love this game, 
But uh, this game will always continue without me. So, uh, you know, I'm going to enjoy it while I'm here and I'm going to be safe while I'm doing it. So uh, I thought it was best for us to just know all of us did is just sit out there and uh, sit this one out, you know, and rest, rest the mind, let the brain heal, and uh, come back stronger. Thank you. Go ahead, Bo, and then Zach. Come well, on, Bo. I, want, I wanted to ask you about Michael Jaquette. Um, He's got these these very long arms, like he measured as like some of the longest arms for a cornerback in the league. Is that something that you've noticed about him? Does that stand out? Yeah, I, he looked like a little uh, a taller a taller little baby eight. You know, he might be young, but he got long like a grown uh, eight arms. So uh, he got some long arms, man. He uh, you know he he uh, still developing as a corner. You know, he ain't playing corner that long, uh, but uh, he's learning well. You know, and I'm doing my best I can to help him become the player he need to do be at his position. And uh, I think I'm doing a pretty good job of uh, leading him the right way, and I'm going to continue to keep doing that because uh, I want nothing but the best for him. And so he got a lot of potential, the, the right size, the right mindset to be uh, one, of, one of the guys in this league. Do those arms make a difference? Huh? Does the, does the length of those arms make a difference, you think? Oh, yeah, of course it does. You know, uh, pitching, uh, shoot, honestly, pitching me with them long arms. You know, I, jam, I jam it from five yards back. Bam! Don't you move. We have time for one more, so we'll end it here with Zach. Hey, Slay, good to talk to you again. Um, I, I, I know I'm, I'm not uh, breaking news to you here, but you don't have an interception yet this season. You haven't had yeah. that since your, since your rookie year. Is there an explanation for, for why those picks haven't come, and how much does that bother you? Oh, that, it don't bother me at all with the picks, you know, because, uh, like I said, I, they go come when they come. Um, I've never been a guy that's been always about picks. Uh, but, you know, when I do get the ball, I do try to capitalize it and make it. But, uh, you know, I love to have them. But, you know, it's just been the fact that, uh, you know, besides the last my, – my two weeks that I had a, a good them games against DK and uh, and Devontae, uh, I probably ain't only been targeted probably like maybe twice a game. And, you know, uh, getting two two balls a game, that's, you know, that's tough. And, and the balls they're throwing, it, uh, yeah, they even overthrow them. You know, or it's out of bounds, and you know, so uh, it it be tough, you know. So uh, but you know, they come, they come and go. You know, I'm 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 a patiently waiting. You know, I still got two more left, and uh, possibly, you know, we gonna continue uh, to see what how to how to shake up. But uh, two more regular season left. You know, I can I can still slide some in. I never know. You know, you have six touchdown catches this year. Um, I don't know if you set personal goals coming into a season, but did you envision? Uh, you know, a season where you would have six catches? <laughs> Not at all. Um, I just envision myself going out there making plays and whenever it comes my way. But um, six, six touchdowns, it really don't, um, I, I really, really don't think about it because um, we still have a job to do. So I just don't let it get to me and I continue to go out there with the same mindset. Go ahead, Martin, and then John McMullen. Hey, Greg, Merry Christmas. Um, hey, I wanted to ask... Merry Christmas. Oh, thanks. Um, I wanted to ask, like, Deshaun Jackson, I guess, has been practicing uh, yesterday and today, and, and how how has he looked, and, and how much of guys like him and, and Alshon kind of helped, helped you and some of the younger receivers so far this season? Um, DJ looks good, man. Looks explosive. Um, he's always been a guy that I can come to and ask questions. Him and Alshon, um, especially whenever I first met him, you know, he always been somebody that I, I looked up to. I always used to watch his game. And um, for him to be able to be an explosive player in the league, um, that, was, that was one of the things that stu um, stood out to me. And I always talked to him, always asked him questions about certain routes and just football in general. And me and Alshon talk all the time, um, every single time we uh, see each other. We always discussing plays and and defenses and routes and just making sure everybody's on the same page. So I'm definitely being a sponge to those guys, just learning all I can. Go ahead, John, and then Jamie. Hey, Greg. Uh, Merry Christmas as well. Merry Christmas. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about that red zone success kind of follow up. We talked to Doug about that. He mentioned your quickness. Do things tighten up down there? Is it more difficult than, say, 20 to 20 uh, when you're in those red zone spots? Yeah, the the defense is a little tighter. You know, they're they're going to be a, um, more aggressive. You have to um, you you have, you have to have a plan, man. You have to come up with a plan to um, to win and be and beat that coverage, beat that man coverage, or if it's on. 
And um, I think that's what we harp on in practice. And it's just it's just a lot of repetition, man. We just work on it a lot. Go ahead, Jamie, and then Ed. Cowboys week means. I know it's a different year. The crowds aren't there. The records aren't necessarily there. Uh, but it is still Cowboys week, and it is still a must-win game. I couldn't hear you clear. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes. I no. hear you. Okay. I was like, can you talk about Cowboys week and what it means? I know it's a lot different this year, being that the crowds aren't there, the records aren't there. Uh, you have a rookie quarterback who's never played in the rivalry, but that being said, it's still a must-win. That that rival doesn't change. We we know that they're um that we're we're gonna get their hundred and ten percent effort and they definitely gonna get ours. It's gonna be a hard fought physical game and um we just have to match their intensity. All right, we'll take one more here with Ed. Hey Greg, I just wanna ask you to uh, to take us through that catch you made on fourth and three, I think it was last week. You got your feet down. Did you did you think you did? Uh they called it incomplete and was overturned. So just take us through that if you could please um those are things that we work in practice um just making sure that we get our feet down first to securing the catch then get get your feet down just letting your feet in your body um just just have a feel of the game and feel of where you at on the field and um i thought i was in so um they did the review and saw that i was in as well so it counted you know uh, we we're all happy and what, we what move on what did Kingsbury say to you? It looked like he, he said something to you on the sideline there. Yeah, he, he told me that I was out. He told me that, that my foot landed out and that I, I was doing a great job. And I told him that I was in, and I appreciate it. <laughs> you play, you know, next to two Pro Bowl guys in, in Fletcher Cox and Brandon Graham, and I was just kind of wondering, you know, A, what's that like for you, and B, just the strength of the defensive line overall? Thanks. Um, it's it's an honor to be able to play with those two. <clears throat> you know, you, you watch from afar, you know, those two do work and um, put in work for years. And to be able to come here um, on their ninth year, being able to work together and see the communication they have, the work ethic they have, the understanding they have, um, you know, I'm definitely jealous, you know. <clears throat> um, so it's one of those things I'm I'm happy for those guys because it doesn't happen happen like that everywhere. And rarely do you have two guys that stay together that long and that uh, feast with each other um, at such a high level. Go ahead, John, and then Les. Hey, Malik. Uh, happy holidays. Uh, just wanted to talk with you as a veteran player. Uh, in this type of situation, obviously, you guys uh, have to beat Dallas and also need some help. Uh, so we've talked to Brandon and Alex a little bit about scoreboard watching. What's your kind of philosophy? Can, do you have to block that out? Do you, do you notice it? Um, my philosophy is uh, just do our job. You know, it's one of those things we've been sitting here. If we, um, as a team, we wouldn't be in this position, you know, scoreboard watching if we do our job. So I think the one thing we have learned is just win the game. And um, if we win and do what we're supposed to do, um, I believe everything will fall in place. But, you know, we just got to win the game. Go ahead, Les, and then Jamie. Hey, Malik. I, w I wanted to ask you about uh, coming back from the concussion last week. Uh, you were able to get uh, cleared uh, very quickly. What was that like? Uh, have you been through that a lot in your career? And, and how do you feel about the whole issue of, you know, the effects of such um, things down the road? How was it? It was, um, in my personal experience, it was upsetting because I got labeled to have a concussion, in my opinion. It was one of those things that um, oh. I think they, they do a good job with the protocols and the people watching. But it, it, for me, it's... Um, I got hit, you know, and I have a bum shoulder. So my shoulder's hurting. They said I laid in the posture... You know, I'm running off the field. Um, I take a knee because I want to give my guys a minute to, to, to rest and for the team to kind of acknowledge what's going on and have a chance to substitute. And they said that was a knock on me. I go in the blue tent. I answer the guys' questions. Uh, you know, I'm very cognitive. I'm, 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 I'm talking to them. You know, we're having a great conversation. And it's up to somebody that calls down and said, because I, you know, laid there like that and, and took a knee that I can't go back. And it was frustrating because as a team, we finally get up in points. We finally have a D-line, as a D-line, have a chance to rush and pin our airs back. And um, as a guy that's fighting for sacks right now, you know, to take those um, reps away from me, you know, just, um, it just sucks. So, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of emotion, but, um, you know, it is what it is. What, so the test isn't really the determinant then? It's more 
I mean, time. to be honest with you, man, I, I, that's what I learned. I, 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 they, they, you know, I have a guy talking to me, and then he tells me that it's not his call, and then I'm getting frustrated because you're telling me you're the end all be all, and now you're telling me you're not. So it's one of those things. I mean, you know, it'd be nice if one of our team doctors, a guy that knows us and knows our attitudes and our and our and our mannerisms, can can make that call. But um, you know, it just kind of sucks when a guy that's watching a game somewhere from his couch makes a call on you, and that's not there talking to you. So, uh, you know, but it is what it is. Thank you. Go ahead, Jamie. Well, you always do so much for the community. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about the coat drive that you organized with the team? Uh, yes, thanks for bringing it up. Um, I was able to partner with my uh, foundation, Malik's Gifts, was able to partner with Burlington Coat Factory. And I was able to come to the guys. Um, what they gave me, I believe it was 25. We, if we raised 25, um, we can donate 1,000 coats. Um, we raised, ended up raising... 35, and uh, we were able to donate 1,500 coats, and then Burlington matched with 1,000. So we gave 2,500 coats in the um, Philadelphia city area and part of Camden. So um, you know, I just want to thank my teammates for all being um, gracious and um, you know allowing these people to um, you know be warm. And uh, thank you. It always makes you feel so good to give back to the community. You do it all the time. What do you want to see under your tree tomorrow? What do I want to see? Um, I have everything I got. You know, my um, I was able to find my daughter in town safely, and um, that's that's what I wanted. Um, you know, this year has been tough. You know, a lot of sacrifices, um, and um, just to have her is is, uh, is what I wanted. So I'm I'm happy. All right, we have time for one more, and then we'll get Jalen Rager. So go ahead, Bo. Malik, you've played for a, a few head coaches uh, in your time in the league. What, in your opinion, is is the most important characteristic of a of a good head coach? The most important characteristic of a good coach. Um, I want to say, like, not sternness, but, like, uh, somebody that can tote the line well. You know, um, somebody, I guess, in my best way can can be a good big brother. You know, not the one that beats you up or the one that just lets you do what you want to do all the time, but somebody in that happy medium, you know what I'm saying, that can keep you at bay. And, you know what I'm saying? So I, I think that's, that's the best one. Somebody that's like a big brother, a caring big brother. We don't get to be in the locker room, but what what's what's the, what's like the feeling in the locker room right now? What's like kind of the mission statement going into Dallas in these last two weeks? I mean, we just taking it um, really one game at a time. Um, it's basically a must win for us, so that's kind of our approach. I mean, that's our approach every week, but it's really no difference this week. It's a must win, and we just focus in and trying to get this W. We'll go Dave and then Ed Kratz. Hey, Javon. Uh, we were talking to Brandon Graham the other day, and he mentioned he's in year 11 right now. He wants to play 15 seasons, he said. Do you think he can do it? Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, BG playing at a high level. Um, he's a guy who take care of his body like no other. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's real possible for him to um, be able to play at a high level that long. Go ahead, Ed, and then John. Oh, Ed, I think you're on mute. How about now? You're good. Javon, uh, how has this um, Dallas offense kind of evolved from the last time you saw them back on November 1st? I know it's a different quarterback, and but it looks like you're getting Pollard more involved. But how, how have you seen a change, if any, uh, since the last time you played them? I mean, like you said, it's uh, it's basically a different quarterback. So I think um, Andy, Andy Dalton, a veteran guy, went against him in Cincinnati. So he's a guy who... Gets the ball out fast and make um, great decisions. So we got our hands full on this one, and we're just looking forward to it. Go ahead, John, and then Bo. Hey, Javon. We talked to some of the guys yesterday, Brandon, Alex Singleton, uh, about you not only have to win this game, but you kind of have to hope for some help elsewhere. How do you handle that as a player? Do you, do you peek at the scoreboard? Uh, from a personal level, how do you handle it? I mean, I, I've been in this situation a few times now in my career, but not really. You just really control what you can do because, I mean, we can't really do nothing about the, the other games that's going on if we don't take care of the game that we playing. So it's really just focusing in on Dallas and, you know, check the score when the game over with. Bo and then Bob. Yvonne, hey, you played with some uh, very good defensive linemen in Pittsburgh. How does uh, Fletch compare to those guys after, uh, you know, getting to play with him for 14 games? I mean, like everybody elite. Huh? It's so funny. I, I just tell everybody, I just play with some elite guy, the tier tier one guys, the 
all pro guys. So, you know, Fletch, of course, Fletch right up there too. Um, I just been blessed to play with some great defense alignment. So um, I'm just happy to have um, get that chance. What impresses you the most about Fletch? I mean, Fletch a free Fletch a dog. He uh, he got one of the craziest club moves. Uh, I get on him every day about uh, how he got so much power with them small legs. But Fletch, man, Fletch just a different different beast, man. I can't say too much. I can't say enough about him. Go ahead, Bob. particularly Christmas, how much has that changed due to the COVID? And um, are you at least going to be able to, to cook your favorite meal and, and be with your family? Uh, it's, it's, it's a lot changed. Um, like you say, I ain't going to be able to be with my family. Um, I usually have my family um, here for all the games and coming up for all the holidays. So that's a big thing for me. But with my meal, I just like eating Frosted Flakes and watching The Grinch. So that's going to be the same.